Anybody tell me what a poem is? <laughs> yes, sir, that bright yellow one. Poem it can it can rhyme, but it doesn't does it have to? It doesn't have to rhyme, okay? Rhyme is good because rhyme helps you to remember and it creates music, right? But doesn't really always have to rhyme. Yes, sir. Like a short story. It could be a poem can tell a story, right? It's like a narrative. It tells a story. But the poem is different because it's written in a different style, right? It's written in lines, right? All the lines don't have to be the same length, right? Okay. All right. So I'm going to read you a poem about, it's called The Waving Gallery. How many people, how many people have been to the airport? How many of you have been to the airport? Wow. How many of you have actually just gone to see somebody leave or have gone to the airport to travel? Wow. <laughs> All right, thank you. You can put your hands down. Okay, all right. So this is a poem, guys. You guys are not an easy audience. You're not, you're not easy at all. In the old days, in the old days, before the airport is the way that you see it now, there used to be something called the Waving Gallery. The Waving Gallery, the, the plane didn't come right up to the airport. The plane stopped out on the tarmac, way out in the middle. And due to passengers had to leave the airport and walk across that, that broad runway and then go up some steps into the plane. So your, your family, your parents, your uncles, whoever, there would be a place upstairs called the Waving Gallery with, with a glass front where you could stand and watch as your family walked, whoever was leaving, walk towards the plane. And what you would do through that glass is do what? You'd wave. Yeah, you'd wave. And that place was called the Waving Gallery. That's the title of the book. And um, I did some art like you guys. I did uh, all the people who are waving to the people going away. The Waving Gallery. Up there. Up there. I could make out my mother in her favorite dress, the one she wore in pictures taken 30 years apart. And Doris, her friend, who had warned her not to cry, a white kerchief dabbing at her eyes. Behind them stood Uncle, waving the keys to the house and the hillman on the same ring. Across the tarmac, the line of travelers moved slowly and the hills seemed closer. I think I could make out people in houses, children in yards who could see me from that distance, going away to study English, as if it were not the language spoken here. <laughs> What's a tarmac? I want you to be listening. So tell me, what is tarmac? I use that word in the poem. Tarmac. What is the tarmac? Yes, sir? A topic? Well, you could make a topic out of it, yes. Yeah. I say the passengers walk across the tarmac and go up the steps into the plane. So what is it? A runway. Like the runway. Very good. Oh, yeah. oh somebody yeah. got a good one. That is good. How many of us have seen snow. Snow, yeah. How many of us have seen it for real? Like real snow? How many of us... What's the first time you ever saw snow? Somebody tell me. The first time. Yeah, Christmas? Where? Yes. In America. In America. You saw it there? Yeah? You went? Where did you go? Good. Where in America? What town? What city? Where? Was it Miami? Was it New York? Yeah, New York. Very good. Very good. So, the first time I saw snow, 
It was not in New York. I, I, where do you think I first saw snow? Without even going away. Where did I see snow? <laughs> no, when I was a kid, when I was a kid like, when I was a kid like you, there was no TV. <laughs> Somebody said in the fridge. In the fridge? No. no. <laughs> first time, first time I saw snow was in a picture in the movies. In the movies. <laughs> but, but it was real, but it was in the movies. So this is the first time seeing snow. There's that scene in the movie when Sinatra shuts off the wipers and floors the accelerator. You're a passenger. You can't see a thing. You hear the tick of ice, the whine of the motor. And you think of the song he was singing back in the bar, One for My Baby. You want to tell him, don't do it, man. Doris loves you the way you turned when she answered the door, that hat. The car is an old Ford, and in the theater, your foot's on the brake long after you have struck something. And you sit there, Frankie slumped over the steering, snow under the tires, churning. What this man did, because his girlfriend said she didn't love him anymore, he got in his car, turned on the motor, turned off the windshield wipers, and the snow is coming down. So after a while, what happens? He can't see anything, but he's speeding. And what will happen eventually? Very good, very good. So you are listening. Okay, I'm so happy. I'm going to read you a poem about my son. I keep asking questions. How many of you have seen, this is a hard one, an actual birth, like a baby being born? Where did you say that? <laughs> huh? You saw it in Mount Hope? You actually saw a baby being born? Was that baby your, your brother? Or you, your brother? Oh, wonderful. Yes. In San Grande? You saw a baby being born? Yeah, your baby sister. How, tell me about that. How did you feel? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, sir. A niece. You saw your niece being born. How old is she now? You kids have experienced everything. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you anything. I mean, well, okay. One hand up there. The guy. The, yes, yes, sir. The God, your godson. That takes the cake. You, you have a. Shh, guys, please, this is serious. Shh. You have a godson. What's his name? Shh. It's okay, it's all right. He can have a godson, yeah. What's, what's his name? Shh, guys, shh, shh, shh. Listen, you know, and everybody, you should know, being a godfather is a serious responsibility. You know that, right? You have to look out for him, okay? Let me read you this poem about my own son. The title is Concern. What are forceps? Before I read, what are forceps? Oh, okay, um, let's be, it's a little more practical than that. Forceps is a kind of instrument the doctors use it. What's the forceps? It's like something you can hold with, right? Something that you can grip something with, okay? So that's the word I want you to look up. Forceps, forceps. The forceps, which the doctor uses, 
left two bruises on my son's head, visible till he was about six weeks old. What kind of doctor, I ask, grabs a kid like that, pulls him like meat from the grill when it's done? Two green spots, as if the tongues were old, the first thing they could find. I find myself looking now that the boy is 40 for further signs of damage. So far, none. Before I go over time, just one more poem, right? It's called The Last Round. And it's a kind of a sad poem, but it's also kind of a strong poem, I think. So it's a poem written for a friend who was a boxer, very good boxer. And he taught young boys like yourself the skill of boxing. Not to fight in the streets or anything like that. Hello, you don't start punching now. Hold on. I know. But this is for him. And it's a sad poem because he passed away last year. Not from boxing, from another kind of fighter. This is called The Last Round. This is what happened after the doctors said there was nothing more they could do. When he had flown back and forth across the Atlantic, he went home and sold everything. Furniture, clothes, car. Opened the gate and let the two Dobermans out. Go, run for your lives. When he speaks now, his voice is a rasp. That powerful body closed around it like a bell around the clapper. His stance too is altered. There's no fooling a fighter, especially the one he faces now, who keeps his hood on till the last minute, who closes in knowing that the dogs are gone. Thank you so much.